All right, guys, welcome back to another React. This time it's going to be Jamal, Jamal Jabbar Abdul Millionaire. Finna go to prison. <laughs> Three foundational reports from October the 1st, the 30th, and the 11th. That is 59381, 62249, and 6332. By the way, this clip is just very low in volume. It's maxed out. So if it's you guys can't hear very well, it's not my fault. Culminating in the guilty plea on 63327. Um, those are all uh, valid um, I think there's PC for the arrests, and I believe beyond a reasonable doubt that Jamal was guilty of the crimes in those reports. Um, 63412 is the one with the alien suit. I want to make a specific comment on this one. Um, I find it especially interesting that uh, there is a law in this jurisdiction that says that you have to possess ID when operating a vehicle. Um and when individuals attempt to give a digital ID and say for whatever reason it was stolen or they lost it, they don't have their physical ID, they are often told by police that uh, this is unacceptable because anyone can just put forth a digital ID and that doesn't prove you are who you are. You got to have the physical card and, you know, you got to be able to match, you know, the face and the card and all that. And so the digital ID is unacceptable and they can't take it. Uh, I will note that here in this situation, despite someone, uh, wearing a costume, um, a digital ID is being sought to be used as evidence of their identity. I reject that as it is hypocritical and conflicts with uh, the aforementioned tenets. So uh, I'm not going to accept 63412. Uh, every report from uh, 64951 uh, through 67600, so that is... 28th, the 29th, twice. The 3rd, the 5th, the 11th, the 15th, the 27th, twice. Damn. Uh, I have reviewed the evidence, I reviewed the statements, and beyond a reasonable doubt, I believe Jamal is guilty of those crimes. Um, 67668 is a weak report in and of itself, even if Winston Walker was here to testify. The fact that he did not appear means there's no way I can sustain those charges. So it's going to be not guilty for the charges in 63412, not guilty for the charges in 67668. What this means, based on my math and Nova and Smith, you can correct me, but I think that's nine times drug trafficking. Nine? Oh, he's, right. go he's going forever. Uh, if you got rid of the two, yeah. Yeah, because I've got three foundational charges that's on the 1st, 30th of October, and the 11th of November. And then I've got nine charges uh, since then. So that'd be nine drugs Jamal. Drug trafficking plus the other charges in those reports. How do you suck so bad? Um, which puts us at the following crossroads. Uh, Mr. Millionaire, <laughs> even if I am to interpret the legislation about the mandatory minimums in your favor, which means instead of treating it multiplicatively, I would treat it additively, uh, you are still looking at 27 years in Bolingbroke. Oh my god. Nine times Bolingbrook, three years per each charge. That's a minimum of 27 years. Add on another 27 years of parole, and that's a whole hell of a long time. Um, now, I understand uh, you and your lawyer have submitted Holy. testimony and claims regarding the voices and what makes you do what you do. And, um, <laughs> you know, I've witnessed some of your shenanigans here in court today. I do, uh, you know, I do hope that people can be rehabilitated, but, you know, at some point, son, uh, you have to pay the piper. You have to own up to what you've done. Correct, correct. Now, uh, I'm going to be imposing uh, the following sentence uh, this way. So, obviously, I'm going to give you the minimum here at the 27 years and 27 years parole. Oh. What this means is um, I'm going to do it like this follows. <clears throat> You're going to go to Bolingbrook. After the first seven years, if you have been, you know, immaculate in your behavior and you have made an effort and you've successfully scheduled uh, meetings with uh, therapists and proceeded with that course of treatment, then I will entertain a petition from you, your lawyer, and your therapist about a transfer to Parsons. And that is, again, if a therapist supports it, that is a medical professional, 
uh, and you have displayed exemplary behavior. We may uh, be able to transfer you to Parsons after the first seven years to pursue treatment. If treatment is successful in Parsons, and if you do show progress of changing your ways, uh, then we may consider moving to the advanced parole program with uh, Dwayne Carter. He runs a program whereby if you, you know, get gainful employment, you work an actual, you know, nine to five type job, uh, you know, you interact with the community and, you know, you in good faith, you check in with him, you know, your drug test and all that kind of stuff, then uh, you may be able to be released again if you stay on good behavior and the therapist does accept you into Parsons and you show progress yes, there you may be able to be released into society under those conditions now even if you get released you know let's say you, you you're perfect your behavior is immaculate mm -hmm. uh, and let's say you know you get released you still you still got a lot of years on parole so Correct. uh Judge Jones here and I have come up with something we feel uh, might help you alleviate some of that parole time and also give back to the community. Judge Jones, you want to explain? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit about this process is um, we're going to be riding. Wait, is that guy? With Nova um, on occasions. And while you do that, um, you're going to be searching for individuals uh Doing weed runs. Okay. Um, wow. Um, you know, I actually really like this. And, uh, you know, I'll be the first one to say that I think um, the, the judging system like there are, sorry, the, uh, the court system and how, um, people get sent away for 27 years, which for those who don't know is actually 27 full days of just like sitting in jail. Um, I do, I do have to give props where it's due and I have to give the judge here props. Um, everybody else that's involved props because, for one, there needs to be some kind of repercussions for what Jamal has done. Uh, but at the same time, like they're actually creating role play for him instead of just slamming the door shut and say, okay, see you in 27 days. It's just ridiculous. Um, so, you know, I'm happy that they're extending some really cool role play to him. And it's up to him if he wants to do it or not. If he wants to just sit in jail for 27 years, go ahead. But now he's going to go from jail to Parsons. And then from there, if he does well, he can go uh, hunt some other, um, you know, weed runners. So, you know, I I actually think they did, it, did a stand-up job here. I actually have nothing bad to say. Uh, that's the way that role play should be. Is uh, they should, they should you know, extend more, more role play instead of putting somebody in a month-long timeout. Um, even though it is ridiculous that the guy gets caught like what, 11 times, uh, in a short period of time, like, come on, Jamal. Uh, but you know, uh, good. I, I don't really have any, I, I can't even critique this. I just think that it's really, really cool. I didn't know about all this. So I, I think it's solid work there from, from the, uh, from the DOJ and you guys know me, I'm usually shitting all over the DOJ system, but, uh, here, this is good. So uh, hopefully, you know, Jamal plays ball and uh, can get some cool role play to this. And, uh, you know, hopefully the server will still be here by the time he has the opportunity to go out and do all those things. Um, but uh, one way or another, I like this direction. I think that they should do this more more frequently. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. And if you want to get crazy, turn the notification bell on. Peace.